right? So I can say to myself, if A is necessary, right? If A is necessary, then A is necessarily necessary, but I should also be able to make a claim on the possibility of A, right? And that's where five comes in, right? So what five is gonna say is, if A is possible, remember the diamond means possibility, if A is possible, then, well, how would we symbolize this? If A is possible, then A is necessarily possible, right? If A is possible, then A is necessarily possible. It has to be possible. If I'm saying something could exist, it could exist, then it has to be the case that that thing could exist, right? That's basically what that, that's saying, right? So then, how is this worded? It's what it is if A, and I actually should capitalize this, if, if A is possible, then A is necessarily possible. Then A is, then A is necessarily possible. Okay, so, is necessary than A. Our axioms of iteration, specifically 4 and 5, this is where most of the confusion comes in. If A is necessary, then A is necessarily necessary, right? If A is possible, then A is necessarily possible. So that's what we have so far. I'm going to erase this and, and simplify it a little bit more so that we can um, make further sense of um, the attempt to simplify um, M, 4, and 5. We're going to see in using combinations of, of these how we can get um, um, systems, of simpl si systems of simplification. Okay, so, so let's, so we recognize that we have M, right? We have M and M says, this is the case, right? So we have M and M says, not sorry, sorry. We have M and M says, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. We have M and M says that. And then we have um, four, right? And four says what? Four says this, right? We have five and five says that if it's possible, then it is necessary that it is possible. Okay, so we have M, we have four, and we have five. Now, it's, it, it looks intimidating now, but what we've seen working up to this, that this is really not that, hopefully it's not that intimidating, it's not that difficult to, uh, to see how we got to this level, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt to make sense of the systems of simplification is basically what it is, right? That's the easiest way to explain it. And I want to be able to take the iterations four and five, remember these were our iteration axioms four and five, and I want to simplify and make sense of these. And this is where people were getting lost because they were getting lost in the redundancies. Okay, if I want to make a, a system of simplification, I can call this system of simplification um, S4. This is sort of an easy way of thinking of it, right? This is this is what I call uh, I do a lot of well I'm not gonna, well it doesn't matter I, I do a lot of what I call bootleg right bootleg uh, bootleg philosophy bootleg logic um, but it's an easy way to get the idea across right so this is sort of the bootleg version um, imagine that you have an attempt to simplify something right um, and I'll do something I'll do something easy remember in symbolic logic if you see my symbolic logic videos. I said that if you have not, not A is the same as saying A, because what I was able to say, if it's not, not the case, then it has to be the case, all right? So this was an attempt to simplify. Well, what I'm going to do, S4 is really nothing other than an attempt to simplify. And the question is, what is an attempt to simplify? Well, S4 is an attempt, S4 of modal logic, um, and this is a system of simplification of modal logic, is the attempt to simplify M plus 4, right? 
The attempt to simplify m plus 4. m is what? Well, we, we've already recognized that m, m is, uh, and I'll do it like this, m is, if a is necessary, then a, and the attempt to simplify 4, which is, if a is necessary, then a is necessarily necessary. Well, what do I realize from S4, right? I realize from S4 that this, this ends up being redundant. There's a lot of redundancy built in this. Why am I making the claim that A is necessarily necessary um, when I'm also making the claim why I'm in 4? Why am I making the claim that A is necessarily necessarily when I'm also making the claim that A is necessary? It becomes redundant, right? So that I can see that it's equivalent in S4 um, uh, it is necessary, A is necessary, is equivalent, is equivalent to saying that A is necessarily necessary, right? And I could add these, I could add these boxes on infinitely. So to say that it is necessarily necessary, and, or that it is necessarily necessarily necessary, so on and so forth, that becomes redundant, right? I want to simplify um, that claim. I don't need to make the claim that something is necessarily necessarily the case. I can just say that something is necessarily the case, right? It doesn't add anything. I'm not really adding anything. Conceptually, I might be adding, adding things, but meaningly, uh, as far as meaning, um, I'm not attributing any meaning to, 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 to the claim, right? So what I see in S4 is the following, right? Is that it is equivalent to say that A is necessary to saying that A is necessarily necessary. Right, so what S4 allows me to do is I recognize that I do not need to keep on adding the same operator um, to, the, to, the, uh, to the claim. Right? I don't need to keep on reproducing operators of the same, same kind. Right? So if I have three of the same operators, I can consolidate those three operators into one. Um, if I have four of the same operators, I can consolidate that into one. Also, just as an aside, so that... Because I know for teaching, you know, it gets, it's also the case that I can say um, if A is possible, right? If I say A is possible, um, it's, it's equivalent to making the claim to saying that A is possibly possible, right? Right? So what, what I always tell, um, what I always tell uh, students and, you know, when you're going through sort of like an introduction of, of this, I always make the claim that look, you know, it's better. It's better, and not only is it better. Um, I don't want to see that, right? I don't want to see this. I would rather see this, right? Unless you're explicitly trying to articulate something for some reason, right? So this um, is redundant, um, as we've seen in S4, which is a combination of m plus four that I can I can um, simplify um, the redundancy to just that. But also there's, 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 there's another uh, interesting thing that you can do as well in this, right? And this is where it gets, and I don't want to get too advanced with it. But obviously then, if it's the case that, um, if it is necessary, if, if it is the case, so let me make this, if it's the case, and I hope I don't lose you on this, but since we, well, let me begin with this. Since we recognize that um, the necessity of A is equal to saying that um, A is necessarily necessary, right? Then we should realize that this part right here, and I'll highlight this in blue, that this part right here, just imagine we get rid of that, right? This part right here is equivalent to, as we've seen, we can reduce it through S4 to saying this, right? So that I can actually make the claim that if it is the case that, if it is the case that A is necessary, then it is the case that A is necessary, right? I can simplify that claim, right? So I can say that if it is the case that A is necessary, then it is the case that A is necessarily necessary. It's true, but I can also make the claim, and it's actually a better claim to make, um, that if it is the case that A is necessary, then it is the case that A is necessary, right? If it is the case that A is necessary, and that's much easier, right? If it is the case that A is necessary, then it is the case that A is necessary, right? So we see that um, through, in S4, that my combination of my modal axiom with my um, simplification, my uh, system of uh, simplification, my system four, I recognize that I can do that claim. Okay, so that's that's S four.